Coming up, Indonesia City volunteers hold a free clinic for its construction and sanitation workers. We see how the lack of healthcare resources in remote areas is a disadvantage to children with disabilities. Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in Indonesia, to safeguard the health of the construction workers at the Jing Si Ho in Pentai in Da Kapuk of North Jakarta, city volunteers and team of doctors came together to hold a free clinic and provided medical services for 177 construction and sanitation workers. To safeguard the health of their construction workers, Jakarta City volunteers and team members work hand in hand to hold a free clinic at the Jing Si Ho in North Jakarta. The recent torrential rain in Jakarta has led many to suffer from colds or muscle aches. Others, probably due to long-term contact with cement, are also suffering from skin-related illnesses. Though seeing the 177 construction staff is keeping the 10 team of doctors busy, however, everyone is happy to give their love. Among them, Dr. Yasavati Kunia is a regular participant of City's free clinics. I am a doctor and free clinics like this are a channel for me to give my love. To be able to help those who need medical attention is a wonderful thing. If I was to visit a doctor, it would have cost a fortune, so that's why I never went. I sent all the money I earned back home. If I was sick, I would feel terrible, so a free clinic like this is such a great help. Construction began in May 2009 for the Jing Si Ho in Pentai in Da Kapuk of North Jakarta and was completed in October 2012. During its construction, several free clinics were held to care for the health of the construction and sanitation staff. I am happy to have been able to receive free dental treatment. Now that my teeth are no longer aching, I can eat whatever I want. We all hope that they will live a better and healthier life and that they feel our care and love. We hope that they will help us complete all the construction work within the given time frame. Despite their limited manpower, team of doctors and city volunteers provide top quality medical care as they pass on the Buddhist NGO's humanitarian spirits to all those around them. Staying in Indonesia in Manado of North Sulawesi, at the conclusion of city's second wave of cash forward program to help the January flood survivors, some 9,000 public servants and police officers joined in the clean-up work to help speed up the recovery efforts. Excavators continue to clear away debris and mud on the streets. In Manado, North Sulawesi, severe flooding ravaged the city in mid-January. Today, some 9,000 public servants and policemen have joined volunteers in Tikala and Wenang to help them claim up. In the hard hit areas, city volunteers are carrying out their cash flow work programs. Over the past two days, they put more manpower in these two towns, hoping to help our residents return their lives to normal. Without a city liaison office in North Sulawesi, city volunteers traveled from different areas of the country to Manado. A week of work didn't dampen their passion, as each sees every opportunity to give. The streets are cluttered with mud and garbage, so cars can hardly move and traffic jams are severe. That's why we are here to direct the traffic, not only to reduce traffic, but to make sure our heavy machinery can work smoothly as well. After weeks of collaboration, the volunteers created a close bond with Manado residents. The volunteers also seized the chance to promote Siji's Bamboo Coin Bank campaign. We hope that everyone can experience the joy of helping the less fortunate. A small gesture can make a difference too. Receiving cash from volunteers, the flood survivors are all smiles. What's more important is that they know city volunteers' warmth and love will be around forever. Moving to the Philippines following the handover ceremony of prefabricated classrooms to Talon Talon National High School in Zamboanga, students of the school are finally able to continue on with their studies. On February 10th, students had their first official lessons inside the classrooms. Let's take a look. This is the 
Talon Talon National High School, the first batch of temporary classrooms in Zamboanga to be installed by Tsuji. Today is also the first day classes are being held away from the sports field and inside a classroom. After five months, students are finally able to return to some semblance of normalcy, and their hearts are full of gratitude for this blessing. The noise outside disrupted our classes. There was dust everywhere. It's much better here. We are so grateful for these classrooms. Thank you. Applying wax polish to the floor before polishing it with coconut shells, students and teachers cherish this incredible gift, which they know did not come by easy. If we smooth out the rough edges, it will look nicer. Each classroom has been beautifully decorated by teachers and students. What stands out are the three Jingsi Afrosim posters on the wall that have been translated into the official dialect of Zamboanga. Those sayings I got from Master will help, my, will help me uh, motivate my students in terms of their values, in terms of their uh, daily dealings with each other. These temporary classrooms are a gift from Tsuji, providing students with a better place of learning. In this relay of love from the professionalism of the teachers to the students' passion for learning, here at Talan Talan National High, we can see hope for the future. Also in the Philippines, the political unrest in September 2013 has left the city of Zimbabwe in ruins. With nowhere to rebuild, tens of thousands of residents are still currently living inside temporary shelters. To help, the city foundation hopes to provide prefab housing to raise the living standards in these temporary shelters. Rio Hondo is a coastal village situated to the south of Zamboanga city and where those of Islamic faith are found in numbers. During the political unrest in September 2013, more than 5,000 houses were destroyed here. They have nowhere to go because they're not allowed to rebuild. Unlike in Yolanda, after the disaster, all they have to do is go back and try to, to put up whatever structure they can. But here they're not allowed to. So that's why they're in, temp they're in the evacuation area. You see them in schools, you see them in our the biggest grandstand we have, and you see them along the road. The sports stadium is the largest temporary shelter in the city, with over 9,000 families crammed inside. Including tents set up on the roadside, this center has taken in over 40,000 residents. Because there are already more than 60 people that have died from September to this time because of dengue, because of um, the conditions in the evacuation centers. The difficult sanitation conditions as well as crowded spaces means that children's lives are put in danger each day. I have a nine-year-old son and looking at the kids with, uh, with uh, open wounds and with wounds on their head, sleeping on the floor, running around with no clothes. If I put my son in that position, I, I don't know. Empathizing with the residents of Zamboanga, city volunteers are here to help. Uh, the city government also wrote to the master asking for temporary shelter while the DepEd asked for classrooms. We would like to thank uh, master for all the help that she has given to the city. Besides building prefabricated classrooms, Tsuji also hopes to provide prefab housings to ease the current housing crisis. Despite the long road to recovery, volunteers are determined to bring love and hope to these residents from start to finish.
to the Ministry of the Interior in 2012, there were more than 13,000 children between the ages of 0 to 6 who were physically or mentally handicapped. To help children with disabilities in remote mountain areas around Kaohsiung City, the Eden Social Welfare Foundation established a program which offers treatment at home on a weekly basis. This is Xiao Rong, who lives with her grandparents in the mountainous area of Kaohsiung's Liu Gui district and suffers from cerebellar agenesis. Her father and mother have to work, so we have to take care of her for them. Due to her illness, Xiao Rong's hands and feet can barely move, and a piece of bread is her meal. She doesn't like to eat congee because it doesn't have much taste. There is nothing in it that she can chew on. Today, Wen Mei Li, who is a teacher from the Eden Social Welfare Foundation, is here to teach Xiao Rong's grandpa once again how to clean her teeth. As Sharon's mouth is very sensitive, even cleaning her teeth with gauze can make her gums bleed. Her gums bleed even if we clean them with gauze. It is because she hardly cleans her teeth. That's why her gums bleed when you clean them. On a weekly basis, Wen Mei Li will visit the family to check on Xiaorong's progress while teaching her grandparents how to better take care of her. Most of the time, we don't know how to help Xiaorong. Teacher Wen has told us ways to care for her. If it wasn't for Wen, we would just let Xiaorong sit in her chair for the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> to slow down Sharon's physical deterioration, Wen has been giving her the opportunity to interact with those around the community. I always ask Sharon's family members to take her out a bit more because she can't do so by herself. That's why we need to help her. Other than helping Xiao Rong for the past 14 years, Wen Mei Li has been traveling around the area of Liu Gui District three times a week to provide at-home treatment for needy children. Following Typhoon Markot, the roads to Liu Gui have been treacherous, and many children in this remote area remain cut off from the much-needed medical resources. If we didn't come here, these children wouldn't have an opportunity to receive much-needed medical attention. The main reason is that many parents can't afford to take their children to the hospital for checkups or rehabilitation on a regular basis. That's why we decided to bring our services to them. According to social workers of the Eden Social Welfare Foundation, many people tend to shy away from helping these needy children when they realize it is not an easy task. However, this is something that you got. We need to help them grow and reach their full potential. They are helping us become better people too. Before winter break concluded this week, students from the Zonghe Senior High School in New Taipei City, as well as teachings in both Xinzhu and New Taipei City, all gained rewarding experiences through attending home visitations, sorting recyclables at a local recycling station, and spending a day in the fields. Here at Zhengxia of New Taipei City, 150 Tsitings are experiencing farming life for the first time as part of the winter volunteer camp. This is not lemongrass, it is Australian tea tree. It's just like essential oil, it smells good. It has a citrus smell to it. Hands that once hold pens and smartphones now hold farming tools. This is a great experience because I have never farmed before. It may not be as pretty and big as the ones we buy from the supermarket, but it is really sweet. To be able to personally harvest crops is a new experience for many, and sorting recyclables is even more of an eye-opener. 
It is difficult to categorize these items because they can be divided into many different types, such as plastic, tape, iron, nails, and many more. It's through such experiences that we come to realize we must rinse these items before they are recycled so that these resources can then go on to be reused in our daily lives. Through reflecting on their past behavior, Zitings realize they can all be guardian angels of our planet. <laughs> Meanwhile, 104 sittings in Xinzhu put on city's volunteer vest as they vow to bring love and goodness to those around them. I wish this grandpa peace and happiness. The students all relish in the joy of giving while also gaining wisdom from the seniors' life stories. I got to take care of one grandpa and he was happy to share his thoughts and stories with me. I gave him a message and seeing how he enjoyed it, I felt a sense of accomplishment. This is a great experience and a challenge. It is also a way to mature. Through such an event, we are able to gain spiritual enrichment. There is white, pure white floral paper and cardboard paper. Also getting hands-on experience in sorting recyclables are 80 students from Zhonghe Senior High School of New Taipei City. I realized that when we were sorting recyclables, we are in fact making a difference to our planet. When we sort recyclables at home, we must give them a clean first, or else the volunteers will have to clean them at the recycling station. Another student also takes photos in hopes of sharing the images with more young people. We will be uploading these photos to our Facebook account and sharing them with our friends there. We hope to inspire more students to join us in the recycling campaign. Through nursing home visits and recycling work, students gain rewarding experiences that will guide them to the right path in life. Next, we join 37 sittings from around the island who spent their winter break at the Hualien City Hospital doing volunteer work. Among them are City University students who learned how to give patients a shower, as well as Tsiqing Chen Yulin from Penghu who overcame difficulties to join the volunteer work in Hualien. Thoughtfully caring for grandma is Cixin Chen Yulin, who is a student of Penghu University of Science and Technology. Although diagnosed with ovarian tumor, she insisted on doing volunteer work and even used her scholarship to pay for her own transportation. I study hard in order to apply for scholarships so that I can save up transport money. I want to seize the moment and cherish any opportunity to help the less fortunate. Helping a patient shower are Tsiji University students who now have the opportunity to put what they learned in class into practice. No matter which medical field, we should learn how to tend to patients' daily needs. This is my first time signing up for the volunteer event, which taught me exactly what I want to learn. Though their winter holidays will soon come to an end, the 37 young volunteers waste no time to offer their care to the needy and at the same time enrich their own life for the better. In Taiwan, while many are still surrounded in the festive atmosphere of the Lunar New Year, city volunteers in Banqiao of New Taipei City and Siling of Taipei all held various events to mark the beginning of the Spring Festival. At a spring festivities event for Taipei Shilin District City volunteers, the God of Fortune parades in to spread blessings to participants. Our God of Fortune represents auspiciousness in deeds and dharma, also well wishes for our city volunteers and members while cultivating a field of blessings in the new year. I hope they plant more seeds of good deeds and wisdom. As an icebreaker, volunteers led the audience in a sign language song and then played games to test everyone's familiarity with Jin's aphorisms. The start of the new year is also a time to welcome new volunteers to the Tsiji family, like newly certified Tsiji volunteer Du Jingyun, who discovered she had breast cancer during the volunteer training program. 
This type of impermanence is what the Master often speaks of, how the four elements are not in harmony with one another. In facing the impermanence of life, we need to look at the situation lightly and not constantly be thinking about the illnesses or live in self-pity. They are a model for us. In our year of volunteer training, we hope to learn much from the new volunteers and use this length of time to expand our horizons. I think this year will be a fulfilling year. Through the event, both new and old volunteers share their wisdom as they walk together on the city path. Meanwhile, at Ban Chao Xiang Shui Recycling Station, recycling volunteers are busy sorting through the items collected during Chinese New Year. Recycling volunteers work tirelessly 365 days a year. To thank them for their dedication, kitchen volunteers are preparing some delicious dishes. The Xiangshu Recycling Station is always filled with laughter and smiles. Our recycling station is really a cultivation ground. We have experienced much of the ups and downs of life here. This recycling station is a place where seniors go to socialize with each other. I was looking for a home for my 88-year-old mother, so I brought her here to do recycling. And then I ended up sorting recyclables with my mother as well. On this day, Zhu Zhangyu, whose life story was portrayed in a diet drama, was invited to share the wisdom and experience of 28 years of recycling. Really, all sorts of garbage arrives at the recycling station, so one really needs to let go of predispositions and not let things bother you. For all those that enter, much wisdom can be obtained within the small recycling station. In the meantime, a group of city volunteers hit the streets in Banqiao to spread some holiday cheer during the Chinese New Year. Several shop clerks gained insight from the words of wisdom that the volunteers were handing out. Those who are enlightened can change their life around. Those who are not are troubled by their life. <laughs> Seeing so many volunteers at her door, the senior grins from ear to ear and insists everyone come inside for a visit. This says we should leave behind our worries and do what instead? Just like speaking positive words every day, we should do good deeds to form good affinity with others. The volunteers also visited the family of the recently deceased Lin Yue Zhao. Lin's daughter says her mother's 20 years in Siji has influenced the family greatly. This is from the year 2000. It was written on the calendar. Master Zheng Yin said, there are two things in the world that cannot wait. One is being filial and the other is doing good deeds. So I keep this with me at all times. Volunteers next visit a counterpart who is at home resting due to a sudden onset of hepatitis C. For her New Year's wish, she hopes to recover her health and get back out to do good deeds. The love and care city volunteers are sending door to door is sure to warm residents' hearts throughout the days ahead. Staying in Taiwan, city volunteers in Taipei have worked with the Department of Social Welfare for 15 years to care for solitary seniors. Volunteers in the Xinyi district have been caring for a grandma who is over 60 years of age and saw positive changes in the senior's life. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.